Hello, everybody. Um, so this is part three of my response to sheep in the box uh, video. Male body people, a guide to transphobic arguments from Turf Island. So far, we haven't really got any like fantastic arguments. Um, there have been certainly some pretty fantastically embarrassing arguments. Uh, nothing that's really given me any kind of major pause. So we're going to just, yeah, kind of just jump into it, see what ends up, you know, being said, if it's anything useful, uh, I'll say if you haven't watched the first part, you can probably go back and watch that. I mean, it's all pretty episodic, to be honest. If this is your first video, you don't need to go back and watch the other stuff. You can just jump into it. I can't myself actually remember where it is that we're um, leaving off. Uh, so, or leaving off, is that the term I'm looking for? I don't know what I mean. Um, but basically, jumping off, I guess. I can't remember where exactly we were, but I guess I'll just have to pick it up as we go along. So yeah, let's jump in. Turfs love to cry about being censored or attacked when receiving justified criticism or backlash, which is just incredibly irritating to me. You don't get the right to try to tone police people while- Um, no. Uh, generally speaking, uh, what actually causes gender critical people to talk about being censored is when the objection seems to be to actually saying this stuff. Like, JK Rowling, for example, uh, the issue J.K. Rowling had wasn't people criticizing what she said or challenging what she said. It was people saying that she shouldn't be allowed to say this stuff. And it's the same thing for me. Uh, somebody criticizing me is something I've never responded negatively to. Uh, people saying I shouldn't be saying this stuff full stop is, is going to make me respond negatively to that. Because I'm like, well, you haven't actually refuted what I've been arguing. You've just said I shouldn't be allowed to say it. Um, that's a really important distinction worth bearing in mind. Uh, so yeah, I mean, overall, like the whole like you know free speech thing is. I think there are kind of complexities to it. But simply put, uh, yeah, I think mostly the objection is to people saying you shouldn't be saying this stuff uh, in absence of actually providing an argument against these claims. White women tend to get a pass most of the time when talking about gender in a way that they just don't when talking about race. There is precisely no data. Well, again, in one of those situations, the fact that they're white is relevant. Again, still this weird obsession with race from this person. Um, yeah, like the reality is that uh, women, full stop, talking about gender tend to, you know, I mean, I don't know what I mean by get a pass, but um, sure, like, I guess the difference is that they're women is relevant when it comes to gender, uh, that they're white is relevant when it comes to race. Uh, I, if somebody's talking to me about gender, I literally don't care whether or not they're black or white. If somebody's talking to me about race, that they're black or white is relevant. Obviously, it's not the be all and end all. Obviously, what, if what they're actually saying makes sense matters most of all, but at least their race is relevant. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure, again, just a weird obsession with race. Can any of you provide any evidence whatsoever that in places that have already implemented self-ID laws, sex crimes, assault, harassment, etc. of cis women by trans women has increased dramatic dramatically? Um, can, so, I'm being asked this question directly, so I suppose it would be wrong of me to ignore it. But I'm inclined to ignore it because it's irrelevant, right? Like, it's, it's, it is... Like, here's the thing. I personally don't know much about this. I made um, a video on, like, um, on the topic of whether or not, because I remember Jesse Gender said there had never been any example of, um, uh, you know, a, a trans-identified male attacking a woman in a bathroom. Never any example of it. So I was like, oh, that seems, that seems unbelievable. Like, I can't believe that. I can't believe it's never happened. So I looked into it, and yeah, it has happened, of course. Um, that was really the only time when I really made an effort to look into this topic. Because apart from that time when it was just like, and the only reason I did it then is because it just seemed like so obviously not true. Um, but, the, you know, here's the thing. the you know, So obviously, I haven't generally made any videos looking at um, studies on... Uh, whether or not this kind of like gender identity thing leads to increased instances of uh, physical attacks against women. Uh, and the reason I haven't done that is because I haven't read any such studies on that. And the reason I haven't done that is because it's irrelevant. You know, like the assumption here seems to be 
that uh, the quintessential gender critical position is that trans identity uh, or, or biological males identifying as trans women will lead to uh, an increase in violence against women. And it's like, well, that's that's a claim that can be made, but that's not the essential argument. Um, the essential argument is that biological males aren't women. And as I've said before, if um, biological males can be women, if trans-identified males are women, then any amount of violence that they commit would be irrelevant. Like, here's the thing, it's kind of, it's pointless, right? Because the argument is, are trans-identified males women? So if I could show you a huge amount of evidence that trans-identified males do commit violence against women, well, that's irrelevant if they themselves are women. Because they should still be allowed into women's spaces, because they are women. If trans-identified males are women, they should be allowed into women's spaces. Obviously, because they're women's spaces, of course, women should be allowed into women's spaces. So if I, yeah, if I showed you what's happening, and conversely, if you showed me loads of evidence um, that actually trans-identified males are no threat to women at all, but I'm right in saying there's no reason to say trans-identified males are women, that we, there's no basis for saying trans-identified males are women, and in fact trans-identified males are not women, then it's irrelevant. They still shouldn't be allowed in women's spaces. It's like, and that's the big the big point here. This is an entirely ancillary issue to the question that actually matters, which is, are transgender identities valid? Are they correct? Are they accurate? Um, so, you know, obviously, I guess at some point, this is probably a topic which I'll make some effort to look into, because it is a topic. I recognize it's something which people talk about. Um, and obviously, as somebody who talks a lot about uh, gender identity, it would make sense for me to actually familiarize myself with this topic. And it's possible right now there are gender critical feminists who have looked into this topic, screaming at their computers, being like, uh, no, this is the point where you should offer the smackdown of how actually there is evidence to this. And maybe there is evidence um, to you know uh, meet the challenge of this sheep person. But again, I just find myself thinking, why don't you make a relevant argument? Like, why are you asking me to give evidence about an irrelevant topic? I don't know. Again, what I've always said is that actually the reason why women are perfectly, uh, you know, at, in the right to feel uncomfortable about biological males in women's only spaces is because that they are biological males and they aren't women. In fact, ultimately, the fact that so many gender identity extremists even kind of entertain this question of, uh, well, is there any evidence that trans-identified males commit acts of violence against women, uh, as, as if it's relevant, tells me that they don't really believe trans-identified males are women. Because it's like, look, if, if you actually believe trans-identified males are women, then why would you be focusing on this uh, unrelated question of whether or not they commit acts of violence? Committing acts of violence, sexual violence, doesn't make you a woman. It's not as if if a woman starts harassing women in a bathroom, she stops being a woman. So why would that be relevant to the question of whether or not trans-identified males are women? It, it seems to me, I mean, this is the thing, it's kind of like, it's pretty clear that what these people are actually doing is putting a focus on like harm reduction over truth. And that's not how truth works. That's an appeal to consequence. You know, if you tell me, well, I need to believe trans-identified males are women because that is the path that leads to the least harm, that's literally a logical fallacy. So while I think, you know, the um, idea that your path is the path that causes the least harm, I would be inclined to heavily disagree with that. It's also not relevant because there's lots of beliefs that are true, which might cause harm. They're still true. And that's what matters. Uh, so yeah, overall, if you want to take up this challenge yourself, then you can. Uh, it's I just feel inclined to stress that it's entirely irrelevant to the actual discussion that matters. Should trans men be allowed into female in these spaces, which they often need to access due to the male spaces not having, for example, tampon disposal or dispensaries? The yes. The only way you could believe that allowing trans women into women's spaces undermines women's rights to privacy, safety, and fairness, which is a direct quote from a turf I recently crossed internet swords with, is if you... Yeah, it does undermine women's rights to privacy. Because the privacy is privacy from men and trans-identified males are men. you think that a significant number of trans women are likely to abuse cis women, which is demonstrable? Why is that true? Hold on a minute. You, you... 
I mean, it's just it's just so obviously not uh, correct because I don't have to abuse someone in order to undermine their privacy, right? Like, um, I mean, I guess it depends how exactly you're defining abuse. Like, if I, you know, I guess maybe you could say that undermining somebody's privacy is intrinsically an act of abuse. Like, if I don't know, I walk in on somebody who I know is naked, I'm obviously undermining their privacy. Am I abusing them? I don't know. But the point is, if we are counting that as abuse, then yes, every single trans-identified male who walks into a woman's changing room or woman's toilet is guilty of abusing women. So suddenly, boy, does that statistic go up. Um, yeah, the reality is that the privacy point, I don't think you can disagree with because it's pretty intuitively obvious that it is undermining women's privacy untrue and one could make the argument that cis women also abuse other women occasionally so we shouldn't allow cis women around other women why do you reject the well that's that's the point that's literally the point i made i remember in the last video i made that point about um you know biological males uh, and again i mean it's one reason why of course yeah having the focus be on well trans identified males shouldn't be allowed in women's spaces because they abuse women is is i, I don't i don't agree with that i don't think it's a good logic I think the actual reason trans-identified males shouldn't be allowed in women's faces is because they're not women, okay? That's it. It's so simple. <laughs> and I just, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's like we're over halfway through this video, of course, and still not uh, not one single argument has been given for why it is that we should believe trans-identified males are women. Not one single argument. Think about that. Isn't that just insane? Like, that's the only thing that matters. If, like, there was a whole talk about civility, the whole talk about blackface, now the whole talk about trans rights versus women's rights, every single one of those topics would have been irrelevant, irrelevant, if you could give a single good reason to believe trans-identified males are women. If you could show trans-identified males are women, it wouldn't matter how civil we're being when we're talking about that. You could be as uncivil as you like. If you have an argument for why trans-identified males should be considered women, it's fine. It doesn't matter. You've won. You don't, it doesn't matter how civil you are. You've given a good argument. Uh, woman blackface. Uh, if you could show that um, it's correct to say trans-identified males are women, then it wouldn't matter how much they're dressing up as you know hyper-feminine. Uh, women who dress up as hyper-feminine, like biological females who dress up hyper-feminine, are still women. Uh, it wouldn't matter. I'm not saying that we couldn't criticize it. Of course we could, because we can criticize when biological females express hyperfemininity, and most radical feminists do. Um, but the reality is that it wouldn't change the fact that they're women. If you can give an argument for why they're women, however hyperfeminine they are, however much they're putting on a costume of femininity, it wouldn't matter because they're still women, because you've given an argument for why they sh should be considered women. And obviously, same thing for the women's rights thing. If trans-identified males are women, then of course it wouldn't even make sense to say that their rights contradict women's rights because they would be women. All you needed to do in this 37 minute and 46 second long video is give one argument for why, uh, and maybe we'll get onto this, I'm not sure, but one argument for why trans-identified males should be considered women. Just one argument and you would have well, you probably it probably wouldn't have been a good argument, but you at least would have got to a situation where, like, the reality is I could have conceded every single point you've made in this video and still be correct about the central thing because you haven't challenged the central issue. So, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, and I kind of almost want to look ahead to see what the other um, uh, things in the timeline are. But no, I'll, I'll let myself be surprised. Further, can you explain how your opinion that male-bodied people, a term that means precisely nothing, pose a threat to- What? So, huh? What? Me oh, okay, let's start with the first point. According to you, a woman is just somebody who identifies as a woman. That means precisely nothing. You know, to say something means precisely nothing, I'm going to be generous and assume maybe that that's supposed to be hyperbole on the part of sheep. The funny thing is, when I say that trans woman means precisely nothing, I mean it means precisely nothing. All you're telling me is you identify as something which by the very reality of you identifying as that thing, it now ceases to mean anything. Woman only means something when biology is its referent. 
well, that's not true. Woman, in theory, you could define woman as anything. You could say woman means somebody with blue eyes, and it would mean something. I would just argue that's not a particularly uh, intelligent way of understanding the term woman, given the historical usage of the word woman. Um, but yeah, basically, uh, to woman means nothing under your definition. Literally, precisely nothing. Now, your claim is that male-bodied people means precisely. I I feel like basically what's being said here is like because the term is quite like uh wordy it's saying like oh it, it, it's wordy that means it means nothing which is a bit uh, ridiculous the reality is what does it mean it means biological male and a biological male uh, is of course a person who has a male body so while you you know I, I don't really know why people use the term male bodied people instead of biological male the reality is male bodied people still mean something it means biologically male biologically male even if you want to say that there are complexities to it around what exactly who exactly qualifies as biological male um even the video i respond to by lily alexandre acknowledged there are some people who are clearly unambiguously biologically male um i think they're called endotypes is that the term? I really, I hope it is. Um, Cause yeah, I, I remember that term being used and it's a term I'm not actually that familiar with, but yeah, I think that was the term used. Basically, yeah, it refers to people who are just unambiguously biologically male. Um, people like me, people like, well, the vast majority of the male population. Um, the vast majority of females are unambiguously biologically female. The vast majority of males are unambiguously biologically male. There are then of course, um, males who have differences of sexual development, which make it less unambiguous, but they're still clearly biologically male. Uh, females ditto and then of course you do get kind of in the middle you then get to a point where maybe it's even so murky that you could say it's hard to even you know there's actually a debate around whether or not these people are uh, biologically male or not um yeah the reality is that either way though considering that the vast majority of males are clearly unambiguously biologically male and we know what we mean by that biologically male means a great deal more than precisely nothing again i refuse to believe that you are so brain dead that when I say I'm biologically male, you don't have any idea what I mean. Here's the thing, okay? When you say you're a man, sheep, and by the way, I'm assuming sheep says would would regard himself as a man, um, just because there's not even been any attempt to communicate um, an identity other than that. My general policy is to, if I know somebody uh, identifies uh, in a way that I would disagree with, then I tend to just avoid using pronouns in general uh, or, you know, usually refer to you know, any, making any kind of gendered language. Um, but uh, if somebody doesn't give an indication that they identify, ident identify a particular way, I just do what I would always do, which is work off my intuitive um, understanding of whether or not this person's likely to be a man or a woman. And in the case of sheep, it's pretty um, intuitively obvious that they are a man. Anyway, so I'm assuming that sheep would you know, identify as a man. And therefore, when you tell me you're a man, sheep, I have no idea what you mean. I, I literally don't have any idea what you even mean. You say, well, I'm a man because I identify as a man. Okay, why do you identify as a man? And what is man describing? Uh, you know, the, the question I always want to ask people is, what truth are you trying to communicate to me when you tell me you're a man? Because me, when there is a truth that I'm trying to communicate to people when I say I'm a man. When I tell someone I'm a man, I'm communicating the truth that I'm biologically male. And obviously unpacking what biologically male means. It means I produce small gametes. Uh, it means they have, um, you know, certain genitals and gonads, uh, certain sex, secondary sexual characteristics. There are very obvious truths. Like, it's very easy for me to say, these are the truths I'm communicating to you when I say I'm a man. What I want to know is what truths is somebody communicating to me when they say they're, they're a man, if being a man simply means I identify as a man. You'd say, oh, the truth I'm communicating is that I identify as a man. But that's not, that's not. Uh, a, a truth that you're communicating to me by saying that. That's just you saying that. You know, if, if somebody tells me that they are gay, they are communicating a truth to me, and that truth is that they are a man who likes to have sex with other men. If somebody tells me that they are black, they're communicating a truth to me there uh, about their, you know, uh, skin pigmentation, their um, ancestry, things like that. Uh, these are all truths. But telling me you're a man when man just means identifying as a man, it means nothing. So I just, it's, yeah, it's ridiculous that like sheep has unironically said 
that male-bodied people means precisely nothing when it means a huge amount, but at the same time apparently thinks that transgender identities are valid and apparently do mean something. Okay, next section, lesbians are being forced to like dicks. So, um, yes, that's true. Well, again, like it depends what you mean by force. The reality is that people are simply challenging uh, other people's preference for biological females. Basically, people are having their sexuality critiqued and challenged, um, which isn't necessarily being forced, but it's all pretty unambiguously and horrendously homophobic. Absolutely no one is saying this. The right really like to pretend that trans people want to force straight men and lesbians to suck their girl dicks, or I guess gay men to eat their- So again, this is probably just going to be like working off the hyperbole. Like if at any point it goes beyond the hyperbole, I'll let you know. But obviously, yeah, uh, if you're if you're going to take force to literally mean like forced, like you got to do this, then yeah, that's true. I I don't think anybody's claiming that's what's happening, and I don't think that's what's happening. However, if by forced we mean like pressured, uh, and discouraged from you know doing the opposite, then that is true. That yes, people are being pressured. Uh, biological females who are only attracted to biological females are being pressured under a huge amount of social pressure to give biological males a chance because it's offensive to deny the validity of their gender identity. Um, yeah, and also I mean, there's there's the fact that uh, there's a certain forcefulness for undermining a definition you know when lesbians say they're lesbians and they mean by that that they're attracted to biological females to say actually no being a lesbian can also mean you're attracted to biological males there is a forcefulness happening there you are taking away um the you know you are forcing that definition upon them you're basically saying no actually this way you're defining yourself you can't use that definition anymore you you know or you should know that when you're using that definition you are no longer excluding biological males from those who you could be attracted to Riley J. Dennis and claimed that actually the fact that she made a video about how we as a society should re-examine how we view gender and that maybe issues of sexuality and genital preferences are more complicated than originally thought is forcing me to suck her dick. Again, hyperbole. It's hyperbole. I actually said, um, I did a video on Riley J. Dennis and that whole thing where I basically kind of actually started a video by giving a charitable interpretation of what Riley J. Dennis said. And then actually I then went on in the video to show how that charitable interpretation has actually been somewhat contradicted by Riley J. Dennis. So, yeah, um, ultimately, again, I don't think, I mean, even then, Riley J. Dennis never went so far as to literally say, people should be forced to have sex with me, or whatever else. But the point is that um, there is this this language, a pressuring language, saying, oh, you know, I'm not saying, you know, again, I mean, you kind of get into a whole issue about, like, with consent and sexual assault, there is a big question about what exactly, you know, at what point it becomes force. But the pressure of saying, you know, I'm not saying you have to do it, but you should re-examine your desire not to do it. Just re-examine it. That's all I ask. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I don't blame people for being uncomfortable about it. Because if you have an opinion that you know is only going to make people feel bad about themselves, why constantly share it with the world? Because it's true. <laughs> there we go. Look, the reality is that uh, I have an opinion and the opinion, the reason I express this opinion is not to make people feel bad about themselves. I don't want people to feel bad about themselves. I would love it if I could make it so nobody, no trans-identified person, feels bad about themselves. Shockingly, the reason I say what I say is not to make trans-identified people feel bad about themselves, it's to express the truth, which I actually think is quite a valuable thing to do. But it's mean to constantly yell about how unattractive you find those people, especially when those people are oppressed. For another imperfect- I mean, that's kind of, again, I, I didn't, I don't know. I mean, I think some of these things, obviously, I am more responding to Riley J. Dennis right now than Sheep. But um, also, I just remembered I do like getting rid of this uh, thing, which is where I changed the um, speed of stuff. Anyway, um, so yeah, the uh, claim was basically, it's okay not finding people attractive, but just don't, like, shout about it and all that kind of stuff. But the reality is that actually- Biological, like, surely Riley J. Dennis would support, like, gay pride, lesbian pride, like, would claim to. And seeing as lesbians are biological females uh, being attracted to biological females, they are shouting about not being attracted to biological males. And that's a perfectly, uh, I think, legitimate thing for them to be doing. Uh, yeah, the reality is that actually, considering that um, same sex attracted people are marginalized in society, I think it's very legitimate for them to shout about how. 
uh, they are not attracted to members of the opposite sex. Now, for me personally, you know, yeah, it's not something I'm going to shout about because uh, as a uh, straight person, this is a kind of, um, you know, I guess I'm in the privileged demographic. I don't need to uh, talk and shout about how I'm not attracted to biological males. Uh, that's not really my place. But I completely understand why lesbians would want to um, shout about how they're not attracted to biological males. That makes complete sense to me because lesbians have historically been marginalized and therefore there's a very good reason for them to actually declare proudly the reality of their attraction to members of the opposite sex. Perfect analogy, it'd be like if you weren't attracted to girls with short hair. That would be fine, but you probably wouldn't write articles and make videos defending why it's okay for you to not like girls with short hair. You Again, complete dismissal of the significance of sexuality by conflating sexuality to something as trivial as not liking people with a particular hair colour. Again, immensely offensive to actual same-sex attracted people. And I'm sure lots of um, you know lesbians and gay men watching this uh, really appreciate the idea that the um, you know sexual preference you have, which for which you know historically um, people and even probably you to this day experience uh, extreme amounts of oppression for, um, is being compared to not liking people with short hair. Great, well done. Nobody is forcing you to suck anyone's dick or eat anyone's pussy. I'll do that voluntarily, just say the word. Always. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. That's just like, uh, whatever. It's just, you know. Why, why do straight people always have to be like uh, shoving their, um, their sexuality in your face? It's just, it's just kind of gross, you know? It's like, can't they just keep it to themselves? Like, I don't mind what two people do in the privacy of their, their own home. But I just think, like, the straights need to be quiet sometimes, you know, and not tell us all about how much they just want to, you know, do all this, this, this straight stuff, you know. They just need to sort it out. So if you, a cis lesbian, fall for a trans woman, that doesn't make you secretly bi or anything, because trans women are women just as much as cis women. Oh, trans women are women. I can't wait until you make an actual argument for that claim. You, mm, like, oh, yeah. I mean, again, this falls into, again, the category of this is literally a non-issue if you can show that trans women are women. Sh give an argument for why trans women are women, and suddenly, um, yeah, I guess lesbians should be attracted to trans women. If you can, first of all, give actually a good kind of coherent definition of what a trans woman is, and then also uh, evidence the claim that they are women, then well done. You've uh, achieved a great deal by simply, like, saying, well, lesbians are attracted to, um, or lesbians uh, should be uh, maybe legitimately attracted to trans-identified males, because trans-identified males are women. <sighs> That's, again, you're, you're, <laughs> there's, there's a pretty big uh, claim there being just left as an aside, uh, like, oh, because they're women. Um, mm, doubt. Uh, and yeah, I mean, the reality is, here's the thing again, I am willing to accept this claim of like, well, sexuality is complicated. And that's something which I've kind of spoken about before. Like, you know, I mentioned, of course, the classic example of like the reality that um, if a, you know, I'm not attracted to biological males, but if a biological male looks identical to a biological female, then, you know, it'd be pretty silly of me to say I'm not attracted to them. The reality is that if, you know, if there's somebody who's a biological female who I am attracted to, and then a biological male does all of this surgery to look exactly like that person, then I, I guess, yeah, by extension, I would be attracted to that biological male. That's an example of how, like, it's complicated. But of course, this is referring to quite a niche example, and the reality is that most biological males probably don't look like any biological females I'm attracted to. It's possible a biological male could look like a biological female I'm attracted to, maybe, um, in which case, there we go. That's that's an example of complexity, but it's quite rare. And this is kind of the point. You can point out this complexity, but you can't use this complexity to bulldoze over these very real established categories. You can point out that, sure, maybe there is actually genuinely some complexity to being uh, a lesbian or gay or straight or anything else that actually like, yeah, maybe there's going to be, for example, like uh, some people who are properly described as lesbians, but there's some reason why there might be an exception to that. Uh, and of course, I mean, I should mention, because it's a pretty obvious example um, in the pornography industry, uh, for women, there's all sorts of like doing lesbian stuff, but then also doing straight stuff. And um, again, you know, I'm by no means an expert, but I think I've kind of got the impression that 
some of the like porn stars d- do lesbian stuff and they are lesbian but then they do stuff with straight people or like stuff with men um but then obviously i think a, you know a very significant majority are straight women who do lesbian stuff because it's their job and again i'm not um uh saying that that excuses that obviously the pornography industry is gross and harmful and all that kind of stuff no 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 thank you but the simple point i'm making is just this is another example of where maybe there's some complexity to it and also i know there is like i remember seeing this thing i think it was like with oprah or something where it was like a, like gay for pay um male porn stars well like male porn stars who for whatever reason i don't know um but basically they they do gay porn because they make more money from it and then they're, they're actually they're not actually gay they're just gay for pay um you know, these are examples where, and then you say, well, you know, how much, you know, is, is there, you know, are, are you gay? Okay. So like, for example, if you like have sex with a guy for a billion pounds, you're probably not gay, you know, cause let's be honest, we would all, I, I would have sex with a guy for a billion pounds, but then it's like, okay, but maybe if you like have sex with a guy for a fiver, that's pretty gay, you know, like, so is, wh- where's the monetary amount that like turns from just like, you know, an economic self-interest to actually being gay? These are all the questions that are very, very worth discussing. But the point is, let's not bulldoze over the reality that quite reliably, there are people who are men who are straight, who are attracted to women, lesbians who are gay or lesbian, who are attracted to women. Uh, you know, I should have said women who are lesbians who are attracted to women, uh, men who are gay, who are attracted to men. Uh, and of course, there are bisexual who, people who are whatever, who are attracted to both. But like, those are actually quite reliable categories. And while you can be like, well, what about all of these very particular hypotheticals? And this is something I do want to actually kind of really dig into when it comes to like, um, uh, are traps gay, which I know is a ContraPoints video. Like the fact that, yeah, there are genuine like complexities and we can talk about those complexities, but let's not act as if it completely... Um, does away with the significance and kind of quite uh, helpful categories of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and straight. You know, when I say I'm straight, you all know what I mean, and you can quibble that with all sorts of different hypothetical scenarios, like, well, what if, you know, you're on a desert island and there's no women around, or whatever else, you know, you can quibble it, and, uh, you know, fine, quibble it all you like. What if there's a, a biological male that looks exactly like a biological female who you're attracted to? I'd be like, okay, okay yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, but the point is that it just, it's not, it's not relevant to actual reality. Like the spoiler alert, I'm a biological male. I'm straight. I'm attracted to women. Uh, I've only ever, you know, well, again, the, the point is, you know, I, again, I, I don't want after I literally like was razzing straight people for, you know, talking about, all you know, like just throwing their sexuality all over the place. But the point is, yes, consistently I have acted in a way in keeping with my being um, heterosexual. And I imagine uh, considering I am engaged to a woman now, that I'm going to continue doing that um, indefinitely. And that actually all of these weird complexities about like, well, what if this very specific scenario happened? It's not It's not totally irrelevant to the actual like nitty gritty of defining these terms or understanding these terms, but it's irrelevant to me. It's irrelevant to most people. It's irrelevant, irrelevant to lesbians. Um, yeah, I'm not denying this complexity, but just don't stress it as much as you are. And it would probably be quite healthy if more people really thought about it and came to the conclusion that sexuality, much like gender, is about the person and about your attraction to them rather than their genitals. And actually, it's really quite sad how much we reduce one another to physical attributes like that. Why? Why? It's, it's, first of all, it's sexuality. Like, again, I don't want to do like the whole etymology thing, but like, it's sexuality. But also, it's a physical thing, right? Like, I don't get it. Like, are you saying that. Are you, uh, it's physical attraction. I don't. I don't get what you're on about. It's just. It's just weird. Like, I'm sorry, but I. I think like if 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 your sexuality has nothing to do with physical attraction, I don't think it is a sexuality at that point. To be honest, you know, I don't know. Maybe maybe we're all just going to be sapiosexuals. But let's be honest. That term's just made up by you know pretentious people. The reality is that it's sexuality. It's about physical attributes. All we're saying is that maybe sexuality is more complex than what kind of genitals you want to gently but firmly tease with your tongue, especially if someone who looks like this has a penis and someone who looks like this has a vagina with your tongue, especially if someone who looks... So, okay, Um, there we go. So uh, that would be an example of somebody who looks 
to me, you know, kind of convincingly, again, like, here's the thing. I know that, um, I kind of mentioned this before on the whole, like, clocking thing. And again, I don't want to, like, um, I don't want to get into it too much. But, like, I'm just going to say that I personally am willing to accept the idea that that person looks convincingly like a biological female. Does that mean that, like, the knowledge that they are, in fact, biologically male is totally shocking to me? It's like, no, okay, now I know that. I can, like, point to certain attributes and be like, okay, yeah, I can I can see how actually uh, these are attributes that would perhaps indicate this person being biologically male. Um, but the reality is that, um, you know, at a first glance, if I just saw this person, you know, um, in wherever... I'd be like, oh yeah, okay, that looks like a biological female. Um, and of course, then you get this person just for the record. Looks um, like this has a penis and someone who looks like... Yeah, that. And obviously that uh, is somebody who, again, if I just saw that person, I'd be like, oh, it's a biological male. And um, yeah, the reality is that this is just another example of like pointing to the very complexity I already mentioned. Uh, I'm not denying uh, the reality of of uh this complexity i'm just saying that you shouldn't use that complexity to bulldoze over the fact that lesbians are attracted to biological females straight men are attracted to biological females so on and so forth yes again you can always nitpick you can say well, what about this very specific example yeah but again why it's just not relevant to most people. So it's not a good look for them to be seen to not really care about or actively contribute towards perpetuating a situation in which hundreds of vulnerable trans people commit suicide at a horrifyingly high rate. Um, again, it's sad. It doesn't compromise truth, right? Like, unambiguously, there is no ambiguity to my um, sadness at the idea of people committing suicide. No ambiguity to that. It's uh, it makes me incredibly sad, but it doesn't change what's true, and that's just how it is. And again, I mean, it's obviously then you kind of get to a point where if it's you're saying like, well, you know, if you use the reality of you committing suicide to try to force a change in other people's behavior, that's straight up abusive. Uh, on an individual level, it's obviously abusive. If somebody ever says, you need to change your behavior or else I'm going to kill myself. Well, okay, okay, you could say, for example, if it's like a very overtly like harmful thing this person's doing, um, then like something they should not be doing anyway, then you could say, well, yeah, okay, that's a legitimate thing to say. But if it's something where, essentially, I guess the point I'm making is kind of suicide's irrelevant to other people's behavior. Like, if you say, um, you know, uh, this particular person I'm in a relationship with is is physically abusing me, uh, then, and then you say, and I'm, I'm on the verge of killing myself, so they need to stop doing that or else I'm going to kill myself. Well then, what I'm going to say is, okay, that I, I, I kind of agree with you, but the point is they should be stopping doing that anyway. Like, you being about to kill yourself is irrelevant. Suicide is irrelevant. And it doesn't mean it's not tremendously sad. Obviously, anybody who wanted to kill themselves because they're in that situation, that would be horrendously sad. But the point is, regarding what the person who's abusing them should do, that they're about to commit suicide is irrelevant. Because they should stop... If you're physically abusing somebody you're in a relationship with, you should stop doing that unambiguously 100%. And that the person you're abusing is about to commit suicide doesn't make it any less true that you should, or sorry, any more true that you should stop doing it. Because there's no greater amount you should stop doing it than the amount you should stop doing it anyway. Like you 110% should stop abusing somebody you're in a physical, oh, sorry, stop physically abusing somebody you're in a relationship with. So there's, you know, there's no more that you could need to stop doing that because they're about to commit suicide. So that's the thing. If in that situation, saying, well, uh, I'm going to commit suicide unless you stop doing this is is irrelevant. Now, there's an alternative, which is what if the person who you know we're talking about is doing something which actually there is no reason for them to stop doing it. So let's say, for example, um, somebody uh, has decided to uh, stop talking to you. Somebody's blocked you on Facebook because maybe you you know you you had a falling out or something like that and you say to them if you don't unblock me on Facebook I'm going to kill myself well in that situation 
you're being abusive. You're being a bad person because the reality is that that person is completely at liberty to talk to or not talk to whoever they want to talk to. And therefore, to say, you need to stop doing this or I'm going to kill myself is abusive. It's, it's a horrible thing for you to be doing. Weaponizing your own suicide to try and force somebody to do something. Um, it's, it's really not okay. And obviously, you know, I'm not necessarily going to start like uh, making this massive moral critique of people who are clearly themselves in a very kind of bad place mentally. Um, but yeah, it's from an objective standpoint, and that's really not an okay thing to be doing or an okay thing to be saying. And obviously you then arrive at the situation, if your only argument, like, I guess that's the point, that you're about to commit suicide should never be an argument for why somebody else should change their behavior. Because like I say, if you have a legitimate reason to believe this person should change their behavior, then that reason applies regardless of whether or not you're about to commit suicide. However, if you don't have a legitimate reason and your only reason for why they should change their behavior is because you should commit suicide, then that's not a legitimate reason and you're being abusive. There is no reason why I should stop saying that biological males can't be women. And uh, if you're going to say to me, well, there is a reason because if you don't stop saying that, I'm going to kill myself. That's abusive. Um, the reality is that uh, this does, you know, actually when you feed into this narrative that people who simply acknowledge the truth of what, you know, a, a biological male is and what a biological female is, when you say that those people are uh, wrong and should stop doing that because people might commit suicide, you're not... Uh, you're not showing gender critical people to be horrible. You're actually showing yourself to be horrible because you're engaging in an immensely um, emotionally abusive tactic. So far from the uh, threats of agree with me or else I'm going to kill myself, creating an issue for gender critical feminists, it simply uh, allows um, gender identity extremists to show their true colors as the emotionally abusive people they are. So yeah, it's, it's, it's not good. 40% in some cases. There are a couple of ways TERFs will try to get around this problem. One, oh, is it? Uh, I mean, okay. Um, so, I, again, uh, the way I just got around it, got around it, was by pointing out there's nothing to get around. The reality is that uh, if somebody's going to be emotionally abusive, then we just need to recognize that emotional abuse for what it is. And while we can still say, obviously, at no point would I ever say, even if somebody's weaponizing their suicidal tendencies uh, in an emotionally abusive way, obviously, they still should not commit suicide. It's still horrendous that they would commit suicide. And it needs to be, you know, action needs to be taken to avoid that being the outcome that happens. But uh, it's nonetheless uh, emotionally abusive of them. Uh, so that, that would be my response. But um, I can already see the claims here, which is pretending it's not happening or acknowledging that it's happening, but claiming it's for unrelated reasons. So I'm going to see what's said. I, again, for me personally, um, it, 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 it is an irrelevant thing. Like the reality is that, again, if uh, trans-identified people are committing suicide, that's absolutely uh, horrible. It's really upsetting. And I just think we need to do something to stop that. But if they're going to say, well, I want to force you to change your behavior to stop doing whatever it is you're doing, or else I'm going to kill myself, then we need to oppose that for the uh, emotional abuse that it is. So to any TERFs watching, I feel I must ask, is it worth continuing to propagate malicious lies like this? Or are you willing to just admit at this point that you hate trans people because you don't understand them and that they make you feel icky? Wait, what? That has nothing to do with it. What? That's irrelevant. What? That was such a non secateur like such a bizarre non secateur um, I, I mean, I don't know how to respond to that. Like, essentially, just for the record, because I don't even see the point. Essentially, what happened is the person just showed like some studies saying actually, um, trans identified people are committing suicide at high rates. Which, okay, I again, maybe that's true. I'm not sure. Um, it's not something which I actually, you know, f for me, I mean, it's again, it's something where my stance on it is: if people are committing suicide, that's horrible. I'm not, you know, suicide prevention isn't my area of expertise. I, I would just say, you know, my stance on trans identified people committing suicide is identical to my stance on anybody committing suicide. It's horrible. It's terrible. Um, and I hope that those people can get help. Uh, my stance on people trying to weaponize their suicidal tendencies to tell me what I'm allowed to believe and what I'm allowed to say is that's emotionally abusive and you're, you know, not being a good person by doing that. Again, I can recognize that people who are doing this are probably in a bad place themselves emotionally, but that's no excuse for their actions. 
Um, that's my stance. I think that's a pretty simple stance. It's the stance I'm sticking to. And, you know, again, statistics on the frequency of suicide amongst trans-identified people, uh, individuals is irrelevant. Um, but essentially all those things were, you know, so basically just said, this is why. And then said that claim, well, uh, are you willing to admit that you just hate trans-identified people? And it's like, well, that doesn't follow from, I don't even see how, let me just go back and hear what it was again. Tufts watching, I feel I must ask, is it worth continuing to propagate malicious lies like this? Or are you willing to just admit at this point that you hate trans people because you don't understand them and that they make you feel icky? So again, I assume that propagate malicious lies means propagate, I assume the malicious lies are the lies that trans-identified people don't have an increased rate of suicide. And the answer is, well, I'm personally not propagating that lie. I don't know whether or not it is a lie, but it's not, like I say, I've, I've said my opinion on it, which is, it's irrelevant to the question of whether or not trans identities are valid. Um, so there we go. Uh, now, yeah, the second question is, am I willing to admit that I don't like trans, I don't understand trans identified people? Well, in some sense, I don't, like, because I don't think they've explained what it is, like, I don't think it's a concept that can be understood. Um, and think they're icky? Well, no, I don't think they're icky. So there's no ambiguity that I don't think they're icky, but again, there's a much more substantial point here, which is what does that have to do with the suicide statistics? I have no idea. This can run the gamut from trans people are all mentally ill to begin with to actually it's a society which allows these people to indulge in their delusions that leads to bad outcomes. Yeah, okay, I would agree with both those claims. So, although I'm not actually sure I'd agree with the, uh, like, was it all trans identified people are mentally ill? The reality is that trans identity is a completely incoherent concept, whereas mental illness is coherent. So, you know, I can't say whether or not all trans identified people uh, are because, um, yeah, trans identity doesn't mean anything. Mental illness does mean something. Uh, but uh, yeah, I would certainly agree in broad terms. I would say that, you know, gender dysphoria is a mental illness and that uh, that's what causes high suicide rates. And of course, uh, encouraging that gender dysphoria, which is what society does also, you know, I mean, again, not very, very uh, difficult to understand. Uh, encouraging the very thing which leads to increased suicide rates is obviously going to increase suicide rates. There's obviously just a load of shite. There is a fuck. <laughs> obviously, just like, like I just lay out my pretty intuitive reason why I think again, and it's worth noting this is not something which I've concluded based on um, looking at like studies. Again, I don't actually think it's that relevant. But um, the reality is this is something I've concluded just based on intuitive reality. Gender dysphoria is recognised as a mental illness. Um, you know, I, I'm not surprised that it would cause increased rates of suicidality. And of course, um, I do not support uh, encouraging gender dysphoria. I support recognizing gender dysphoria as harmful and something which should be uh, recognized as harmful. And therefore, I would say that I'm uh, engaged in the action which is likely to reduce instances of trans-identified people uh, continuing to have any kind of suicidal tendencies. Fucking mountain of evidence that proves beyond almost any doubt that the massive disparity in suicidality between trans people and cis people is due partly to dysphoria, but overwhelmingly due to the massive levels of harassment, hate, rejection, and prejudice they receive from society in general, and transphobes in specific. And honestly, I get it. I can only imagine what it must be like to come out, be disowned by a family. Okay, so I'm just gonna pause there and just say, but again, the point is that um, that uh, extends from their, their trans identity, right? But here's the thing, okay? If somebody had gender dysphoria but didn't have a transgender identity, actually got um, biological sex affirming therapeutic care, then they wouldn't face any of that. So hold on a minute. This is <laughs> Sheep's argument here is literally showing that transgender identity is bad then. Because if the what causes it is harassment and all of this stuff, harassment that presumably extends from uh transgender identity, which I guess would have to be the argument, then the conclusion is that people with gender dysphoria shouldn't identify as trans then, because if they just had gender dysphoria and got biological sex affirming care, then they wouldn't face any of that harassment, so they'd be fine. Uh, you know, well done sheep, you've, you've solved the problem. Family, and on the street sexually or physically assault you, the media tells everyone that you're subhuman, and people you looked up to for your entire life, like JK Rowling for example, tell you that your experiences are invalid and that even though you're more likely to suffer incredible amounts of abuse from- I tell you what, when you hear all of that, isn't it a great thing to think that like gender critical parents aren't going to raise their kids to experience any of that? Because even if I did have a kid who had gender dysphoria, I would again 
probably at the risk of going to prison, uh, insist that they had biological sex affirming therapeutic care rather than therapeutic care, therapeutic care, which um, it, it actually encouraged them to live out their delusions. Um, yeah, you, you sure do make um, being transidentified sound pretty bad. Good thing that myself and people like me think that trans identity should be opposed. Uh, well done. Turfs and transphobes like to pretend that they don't hate trans people, they just have different opinions concerning them. Yep, that's 100% accurate. I don't hate any trans-identified individuals, I just have different opinions. Uh, I'm claiming that because it's true. Let's hear what's said in response. ...and concerns about the threat that they apparently pose, much like Tommy Robinson doesn't hate Muslims, he just thinks they're all child molesters and has concerns that their existence may pose a threat to Western society. Okay, so that's an interesting analogy. Uh, I've stated my opinions on Islam before. I actually did have one time somebody comment saying, I'm more likely to have my channel taken down for my opinions on Islam than I am for, you know, my opinions on gender identity. I'm not sure if that's true, but I guess, you know, to avoid rocking the boat, I won't restate my opinions on Islam. But um, ultimately, the, the claim there is like, Tommy Robinson doesn't hate Muslims. Uh, he just has concerns about like their effect on society. So, I mean, in some sense, I mean, obviously they're both belief systems and, you know, I don't know what Tommy Robinson's opinion is, but you know, if Tommy Robinson, as I kind of suspect might be the case, simply thinks Islam is a harmful ideology and therefore people supporting it uh, is, is bad, which, you know, is kind of my opinion, um, then I would completely, like, for example, I don't hate Muslims. So, like, you know, my opinion on Islam is pretty much, you know, somewhat similar to my opinion on gender ideology. And in both cases, I don't hate the people who subscribe to that idea. I simply think that the idea itself is harmful and therefore I'm opposed to the idea. Uh, I don't know if that describes Tommy Robinson. It definitely describes me. Uh, the reality is that it's a perfectly legitimate thing. And of course, it's exactly similar to how um, I hate fascism. I don't exactly hate fascists, uh, at least not in some kind of um, uh, essential sense. Uh, perhaps I hate them for the beliefs they have. But uh, ultimately, what I want is for them to reject these ideas, and the ideas are the real thing I hate, um, and to change their opinion. You know, I hate lots of very bad ideas, whether those ideas are fascism, Islam, gender ideology. Um, it doesn't really matter. The point is, I hate those ideas, and if I have any hatred at all for, um, you know, the people who uphold those ideas, it's simply because they uphold those ideas. Now, in the case of gender identity, I actually view a lot of these people as victims of these ideas. Um, and, you know, I mean, it's kind of, in all cases, kind of, um, it's not so much, I don't hate every single person who upholds these ideas. I hate the people who perpetuate these ideas. You know, I don't hate your average kind of um, mosque-going Muslim, but I hate uh, Ali Dawa, who has 500,000 YouTube subscribers, is one of the most prominent apologists for Islam, and has, and has gone on record saying that he thinks that people who leave Islam should be executed, and he's proud of that. Um, you know, and has also said that if his um, nine-year-old daughter uh, menstruated, you know, had her period, he would say that it's appropriate for her to get married. Um, that's the kind of person I hate. Uh, you know, I hate Ali Dawa because he actually um, believes these ideas you know, he believes what Islam teaches and he acts it out um, and he encourages people, other people to believe this idea in the exact same way that I hate the people who, um, you know, I don't hate people who just are confused, have gender dysphoria and buy into this um, gender identity nonsense. But I do hate the people who perpetuate this idea and in doing so cause immeasurable harm in the lives of others. Um, and ultimately, yeah, that's that's my stance. So you know, I hate the people who really kind of push these ideas because I hate these ideas, but I view a lot of people as simply victims of these ideas. Um, you know, it's, again, so do I hate just like, well, no, I mean, I have like trans-identified people who are, uh, you know, on my channel and some of them even seem friendly. And, you know, those friendly people, I, <laughs> I don't hate them at all. Uh, I just, you know, again, I'm sure they wouldn't appreciate hearing this because maybe it sounds a bit um kind of... Uh, patronizing but i feel sorry for them you know i genuinely want them to be really happy acknowledging reality and it makes me sad um to think that they are actually not happy acknowledging reality and especially to think that they could even um be suicidal because of their inability to acknowledge reality 
And, you know, I suppose if we're talking about suicidality, Islam's also got a relevant thing there. There's lots of people who are killing themselves because of Islam, but, you know, to slightly different and indeed worse effect. So, um, yeah, overall, I mean, Tommy Robinson, I don't really know much about Tommy Robinson. Like, um, I do know that he left the EDL because he thought the EDL was too racist, which is kind of promising. Um, but then at the same time, yeah, he's he's I don't think we'd agree on that much. But uh, it seems to me like Tommy Robinson is uh, actually genuinely uh, falls into the category of like doesn't have a problem with people of a particular race. But again, I don't know. I don't know really anything about Tommy Robinson. Um, I know Tommy Robinson has spoken to lots of people who I am uh, fond of. Like um, I've mentioned David Wood on this channel many times before. He's a um, a doctorate in philosophy who, or a doctor of philosophy who has criticized Islam a lot. And I know that Tommy Robinson is friends with David Wood. Now, yeah, I don't know whether or not, um, you know, certainly David Wood is not remotely racist. He just has criticisms of Islam as an ideology. Uh, I'm not sure whether or not Tommy Robinson falls into that category, but I guess overall, if the point is to try and be dismissive of this claim that uh, gender critical people don't dislike the people who uphold this idea, they just dislike the idea itself, well, that would seem to be true. Listen, Tufts, you can say that you're not a bigot, but we know that you're extremely willing to deny the provable fact that transphobia causes suicides and spread disgusting lies about trans women specifically, so I don't think it's unreasonable to call you bigoted. But why? Why don't you think? How does that follow? I don't see. I don't see how it follows. I mean, me personally, I, I, I mean, I guess, like, the thing is, sure, if you're, like, lying about trans identified people, to spread hate, maybe that is kind of bigoted. But the ultimate point of being gender critical is simply rejecting the claim that um, trans-identified males are women. And I don't think you've you've done a particularly good job at uh, refusing that. I mean, I can kind of see how, you know, like it's possible that somebody could be bigoted against trans identity, but the reality is that most people simply just disagree with it. Um, you know, and I don't think it's correct to describe that as bigotry. I could be wrong though, maybe you do have perfectly legitimate reasons for lying about and attempting to invalidate and downplay trans people's existence and increase- Again, lying about it, how? Attempting to invalidate it, well, yeah, I think I'm doing a pretty good job at that. Um, and that is, yeah, I do have a legitimate reason for that, which is that it's not true. Um, like, I'm going to invalidate something if that thing isn't true. Alright, um, so we're probably gonna have the final part of this video end up being sort of short because there's not that much left, but certainly there's too much left for me to finish up in this video. So overall, I think it's fair to say we all had a fun time. I think we touched on some important issues uh, relating to different topics. Um, and, you know, I don't know. I mean, it was all, I didn't find that so annoying as before. I'm not sure why. Um, but I mean, I guess part of it is like, I'm just realizing like, there's just going to be nothing else to really talk about. Like, we're basically done. Like, it's just, there's no way there's going to be in the last nine minutes of this video, some kind of fantastic argument presented. So yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty much done. Um, so I'll just say, if you enjoyed this video, please do like, comment, share, subscribe, let me know, uh, how you, how you feel about it. Um, and also you can check me out on Twitter. You can also check out Gilded, which, um, has, you know, uh, it's, it's a good little community around this channel. Um, and of course you can give on Patreon. That's really appreciated. Everybody who gives on Patreon. Um, I, I love you from the bottom of my heart and I'll just say, uh, thank you to my current patrons. In addition to the names scrolling past on your screen right now, I would like to give a special thanks to last month's patrons, Charlotte, Sambuca, and Skeptical. You're all very appreciated.